Welcome to our bite-sized video on economic compositing. This short demonstration is designed to give you an introduction to using the economic compositing tool. For a detailed review and guide, we have a longer video available on our YouTube channel. In LeapFrog, you have the option to composite drill holes. Compositing is a process to reduce the variability of sample sizes that may exist in a database. There are several reasons why you may want to composite drill hole data and LeapFrog provides different methods to achieve the desired output. For today's video, we are focusing on the economic composite tool. The economic composite tool takes the raw assay data and sets all waste rules based on run length grade and internal dilution. The output includes all waste categorical intervals as well as numeric composite intervals based on a cutoff grade which can then be used to generate geological model volumes and used for statistical analysis and numeric modeling. The aim is to create a reasonable mineralized envelope from all intervals that have been generated based on mineability parameters in addition to a cutoff grade. This is useful when geology is maybe poorly understood, geology doesn't control mineralization, or when assay is the only information that is available. So we'll jump into LeapFrog and we'll start by having a look at our assay data. So here you can see one of our data sets where we've had a number of drill holes intersecting mineralization. In more advanced deposits, you may know or want to evaluate a number of mining and economic parameters, such as the impact of applying gray cutoffs and minimum mining widths. All compositing tools in LeapFrog can be found under the drill holes object in the Composites folder. Right-clicking will bring up the menu and then we can select the Economic Composite tool. When you initially open the Economic Compositing tool, there are a number of options available. Firstly, you set the numeric value of interest. In this case, we're going to be looking today at zinc. You can set rules for missing values. You can either use a fixed value, sometimes things like half the detection limit, or you can use an average of the enclosing intervals if your mineralization is more continuous. In particularly nuggety deposits or ones with extreme outliers, you can cap high grades as well. Next, we have the compositing tab. There are three compositing types to choose from. Basic, Advanced, and Advanced Plus. Basic uses a simple length weighted average and will tend to produce longer waste or composites. The advanced and advanced plus are generally more conservative in that they provide greater control over waste dilution of ore. For today's exercise, we'll pick advanced. For the cutoff grade, the histogram can be used as a guide. There's an option to set a standard view or log scale, and you can also adjust the number of bins. Depending on what you set your cutoff grade at, values greater than or equal to the cutoff grade is considered ore, and less than is considered waste. For today's analysis, we will set the cutoff at 5. And for the minimum ore composite length, we will set the value at 5 metres. The minimum ore interval can be designed to meet a predetermined mineable ore size or other factors that you may need to consider. The use true thickness setting can be applied when drilling is oblique to the major trend of mineralization, which can result in some sample intervals becoming much longer than the true width. Selecting this option requires a compositing algorithm to composite using true thickness measured perpendicular to a specified reference plane, essentially weighting the value so as not to overrepresent mineralized samples. Max included waste is an optional threshold that constrains the total length of waste that can be accumulated within an ore composite. Increasing this value will permit greater dilution of ore with waste before the candidate ore section will be rejected. Max consecutive waste is an optional threshold for basic and advanced dilution rules, but it is required for the advanced plus. It constrains the length of the consecutive intervals classified as waste that can be considered for addition to an ore composite. Keep short high-grade ore composites is an option that allows ore composites less than the minimum length to be included. 
This is provided that the minimum linear grade is exceeded. Composite and direction just determines which way the algorithm runs up or down the hole. And when you're using advanced and advanced plus, both is selected as default. Composite and twice will run the composite and process a second time after the first pass, which can sometimes help to smooth out the results. Once we've set our cutoff grade of 5% and our minimum length of 5, I'm going to leave the other ones as default and we'll just pick an appropriate name for our composite table. Click OK and let this run. Once this is processed, we now have the new table in our composite folder. If we double click to look at the table, we can see it brings up an overview of the data available. To quickly run through these, status is the category is defined as ore or waste based on our parameters. The zinc percent column gives you the weighted average grade of that interval. The true length is the linear length of that interval. Linear grade is the average grade times by the true length. The dilution true length is the total length of any diluting intervals, i.e. intervals that fall below the cutoff we've specified. The dilution linear grade is the weighted linear grade below the cutoff material times by the length. And the percentage missing is the percentage of missing samples within the composite. If we load our composite table onto the scene, we can turn off the assays and have a look at the results. So you can see, if we add the legend, that the compositing tool has gone through and classified our drill holes into waste in blue and or intervals in red. If we turn off the waste, we can start to get an idea of the trend in the direction of our mineralization. To have a look at this in a bit more detail, what we'll do is we'll focus in on one particular drill hole. If I click on my OR interval, I get the same statistics that we looked at in the table. So in this case, I can see that my OR interval is 55.1 meters long at an average grade of 12.72%. Within this OR interval, I have 2.5 meters of dilution. And we can see that that 2.5 meters is probably this sample sitting here. I can color this by the same discrete color map to see what falls above and below. We can then start to understand the impacts of these decisions through numerical models or use the category data to model domains. For a reasonably complex topic, this is a very brief overview. As mentioned at the start of the video, we have a more detailed discussion around the settings and processes on our YouTube channel, which I'd recommend you watch if this is something that may be of value to you. Thanks very much for joining.